I want to talk to you about how to open a Capital One business account this year. So here are the general considerations I want you to pay attention to. I want to first talk to you about the application info that you need to really have as when you want to accelerate the process. And uh, so what information would you need to complete uh, the application online? Because the good thing about uh, Capital One is that you don't have, first of all, here is a bank that's not available nationally. So they don't have, uh, let's say, branches in all in all, uh, in all all states. I think they have a, a they have branches in about 14 to 16 states. So it is essentially an online bank. OK, so you want to really think about opening your account online. So use useful information to have on hand to reference as you fill in your application will include your uh, your personal information. So we're speaking about Social Security card and our personal tax return. You want to have also your businesses, articles of uh, ownership, articles of incorporation, business tax returns. So your your, your 1065, your 1120, your uh, 1040. If you are a solo, if you are a solopreneur, or your 1120s. If you are, if you have an S corporation, you want to have a proof of ownership, SS4 notification letter, assumed name statements like a DBA and or your current lease or certificate of, of uh, occupancy. So you pretty have a pretty a pretty straightforward process. And uh, you also want to have uh, up to date information about your business's owners. So we are speaking about your ownership, the ownership percentage, date of birth, social security number, address, etc. Now, what information would you need to complete the application with the with the rep? If you were to go to a, a brick and mortar a branch, what would you need? Well, you will need your personal information, same thing, name, date of birth, social, your email address and phone number, the US address and owner establishment date, not a PO box though. They will not take a PO box. They want they want a real a real address legal name of the business and the type of business is it an LP LC C corporation S corporation you know what is it is it a nonprofit you want to have the business establishment date with the signers of full name the tax ID number your EIN the ownership structure the number of employees and also the percent of ownership and annual gross revenue I said gross not net revenue annual gross revenue so that's the your gross sales and additional documentation may actually be required depending on business ownership structure. So ask your brancher, I mean your, your brancher, your banker at the branch for details. Next, let's talk about your documents. So when you, as you're trying to really open your Capital One business account, there are certain documents that you, you got to have, okay? And those documents will depend will depend upon the, the type of business that you have. So for corporation documents, you got to have certified articles of uh, incorporation or certificate of uh, good standing or certificate of incorporation, formation, registration. And IRS form SS4, CP 57-5A or IRS letter 147C. What about S corporation documents? You want to have a certified articles of incorporation or certificate of good standing and IRS form SS4 CP 57 5A or IRS letter 147C. What about LLC documents? You want to have certified articles of incorporation or certificate of formation or registration or certificate of good standing or signed and dated operating agreement and IRS form SS4 CP 57 5A or IRS letter 147C. What about series uh, limited liability company SLLC documents? You want to have operating agreement for the series LLC and the certified certificate of formation managing LLC and IRS form SS4 CP 57 or IRS letter 147C. What about low profit LLC documents? You want to have a certified certificate of uh, organization and IRS form SS4 CP 57 or IRS letter 147C. We'll put this on the screen by the way. What about LP uh, documents? You want to have a signed and dated partnership agreement or certified evidence of uh, registration with Secretary of State and IRS form SS4 CP 57 or IRS letter 147C. What about general partnership document? You want to have signed and dated partnership agreement or Certified evidence of uh, registration with Secretary of State and IRS Form SS4 CP 57 5A or IRS Letter 
147C. What about limited partnership documents? You want to have a certified certificate of limit, limited partnership with the Secretary, Secretary of State or signed and dated partnership agreement or certified evidence of registration with the Secretary of State or certified certificate of uh, good standing and IRS form SS4 CP57-5A or IRS letter 147C. And if you are a sole proprietorship, there are certain documents that you, you got to have. So sole proprietorship documents, no additional business documentation is required here. And what about unincorporated uh, association or club documents? You have certified certified articles of organization or charter letter from a national organization authorizing a local chapter on organization's letterhead or recent meeting uh, minutes on organization's letterhead or signed and dated formal written agreements or bylaws and uh, also irs form ss4 cp57 5a or irs letter 147c what about international business corporation documents you want to have certified articles of incorporation or certificate of good standing you also want to have a irs form ss4 cp57 5a or IRS letter, IRS letter 147C. And you, what about nonprofit organization documents? You want to have a non, non for profit articles of incorporation, if incorporated, or recent minute, recent meeting minutes on organization's letterhead. Those minutes must be on organization letterhead, okay? And you want to have IRS form SS4 CP 5758A or IRS letter 147C. And IRS determination of 501c3 or letter of tax exempt. What about trust and estate documents? Well, you want to have documents based on entity type and certificate of trust. So you can see that the uh, Kepler one is, is pretty uh, comprehensive in their uh, in their requirements, especially when it comes to uh, the the uh, foundational paperwork that you should have. So they just want to make sure that you are who you say you are, really. I want to talk to you about the customer ID policy. So when we speak about opening a Capital One business account, it's important to have the proper customer ID policy. Otherwise, they're not going to open the the account for you. Whether you're doing online or at let's say at a branch, the reps are trained to make sure that to make sure they get the right documentation because the the uh, Capital One is uh is compliant with uh, government's uh, government regulations especially when it comes to uh, AML, so anti-money laundering. So that's really important. And uh, so what important information should you know about Capital One's procedures for opening a new account? Well, to help uh, the government fight the funding of terrorism and money laundering activities, federal law requires all financial institutions, including Capital One, to obtain, verify, and record information that really identifies each person who opens an account. So for you to actually... Uh, open a business account with the capital one you got to have the proper documentation so what happens here is that when you open an account capital one will ask you for your name address date of birth and other information that will allow them to identify you it's all about identifying you they may also ask to see your driver's license or other identifying documents okay that way they have a clear idea that this is really you this is part of a something called kyc know your customer so capital one has uh, put in place a pretty strong kyc process to make sure that they are vetting uh, all account holders okay now there are there is uh, some other important information so you must be at least 18 years of age and must be a legal u.s resident additionally as uh, as a matter of fact as a matter of procedure rather all applicants are subject to a review of uh, past account handling and verification of the information provided so Basically, if you currently have uh, an account with uh, with Capital One, or you, or let's say you have had an account in the past, and uh, you have used the the, the account in a, not in a good way, this could really uh, this could impact your uh, your acceptance rate. So that's an important. So they look at their their database to see if they have some uh, information about uh, you about your past behavior with them. So they will look at, into your check system records, if any, and so on and so forth. 
So when we talk about opening a Capital One business account, you have two primary business accounts with uh, Capital One. You have uh, the basic checking and you have the enhanced checking. So basic checking account and enha the enhanced checking account. Let's first talk about basic checking. So basic checking is pretty, as, as the name implies, is actually business checking that you can count on for your basic cash flow management needs. So we are speaking here about what? Cash inflows and cash outflows. Pretty straightforward, nothing really complicated, nothing really convoluted, straightforward. This is good for for a small business, a micro business with uh, with very few uh, very few transactions, or even a small uh, like if, if, even a solopreneur. If you're a solopreneur and you're looking for a very basic checking account, here is it for you. And when we when we speak about the basic checking account, you actually have uh, a couple of things. You have fees, account details. You have a digital money mo movement. Pretty straightforward. So the fees, fifteen dollars monthly service fee. So that's really important. $15 monthly fee. Now this is waived if the prior 30 or 90 day balance averages $2,000 or more. And uh, there are actually uh, no fee uh, at uh, more than 70,000 ATMs. So that's really good. You can access your money with no fees at Capital One, Money Pass, and All Point ATMs. Now there are no fee in terms of digital transactions. I was telling you a little earlier that Capital One becomes like an online bank because uh, they are not present nationally, yet they are a big player when it comes to credit cards. So basically for on the banking side, there are no fee in terms of digital transactions. And this include what? Mobile deposits, ACH payments, and online bill pay. And uh, so th that's kind of cool to think about it that way. And uh, so basically when you think about basic checking, think about simple cash flow management. So you can actually... Uh, with unlimited digital transactions and streamlined services, this is really a smart choice. And uh, Capital One actually is taking care of you. They got you covered, especially when it comes to digital money movement. Okay, so their basic checking account allows you to access ACH payments for free, send wires from the web, and pay bills and vendors from one place. And you can also deposit on the go with mobile deposit. That's really fantastic. So you have a bank on the go. Okay, you have 24 seven access. You have online bill pay and you also have FDIC insurance. So basic balances in your basic checking account are fully insured up to the FDIC's allowable limits and which are usually around a quarter of a million dollars. I want to talk to you now about the second checking account that you might want to know and that's the enhanced checking account with uh, Capital One. So. Basically, uh, this account is perfect for businesses with higher balances and higher transactional volumes. Okay, so you have more, like basically you have more, more, more money movement so you can focus on the big picture. That's what we love a lot here. And so basically this account, if you're listening to me right now, it doesn't matter if you are a small business, large enterprise or micro or mid-sized enterprise. It, it's all about the transactional volume that you have every single month. So this enhanced checking account it's perfect for businesses with higher balances. So you're able to stay in control of your business with checking designed to meet your needs. In terms of fees, we are speaking about $35, $35 monthly service fee. And this is waived if the prior 30 or 90 day balance averages $25,000 or more. So for basic checking, the uh, average was $2,000 for uh, enhanced checking is 25,000. So you have free domestic wires, so incoming wires are free and the first five outgoing wires are free every single month, every single month. And uh, there are no, I mean, there are no fee for it when it comes to uh, digital transactions. And this is kind of similar to what you have with uh, basic checking. So no fee digital transactions. And this include what? Mobile deposits, ACH payments, and uh, online bill pay. You also have additional features for your business if you are on the enhanced checking account. So this is kind of cool. So we are speaking about, well, let's, pretty, let's go a little deeper here. So you have a digital money movement. So you are able to uh, send, uh, you, are, you are able to access ACH payments for free, send wires from the web and pay bills and vendors from one place. You can also deposit on the go with mobile deposit. You have uh, overdraft coverage. You have business checking and uh, you also have uh, FDIC insurance. So that's, that's kind of cool in terms of uh, 
flexibility and also in terms of uh, scalability, you are really well covered here. So we love we love that part that uh, aspect of things a lot. Now, one thing I want to say here is that the the cool thing about uh, Capital One is that uh, even though the bank is only present in fourteen to uh, sixteen states physically, the bank is a is a is a dominant player when it comes to our online banking in this country. So basically, you can open an account whatever you are at it doesn't matter even if they have or they don't have a branch nearby let me give you some few uh, extras here before we close to this conversation when you think about uh, opening a capital one business account it's important to really understand that you have uh, a few unique benefits that come uh, that come with uh, business bank accounts in general, whether you have, an, you have them with Capital One or with uh, with Wells Fargo, with uh, Citi, with uh, Bank of America, with or with other banks, okay? Of course, you have liability protection. You have streamlined tax and accounting processes. You have potential for expanded purchasing power. And you have the potential to establish business credit, okay? And uh, so basically, you got to really think about the fact that you have a types of uh, different types of business bank accounts kind of similar to an individual uh, bank account so you have checking accounts you have a savings account that's for sure but you also have a merchant service merchant services account so those accounts actually allow your business to accept and process debit and credit card payments and merchant services accounts are linked to your primary business bank account and they verify funds before depositing them into your primary account they charge a fee per transaction, usually a percentage such as 1.5% or 3.5% of the transaction amount. So something to really uh, think about. Now, there are some advantages with with this account. When you really think about it, you are able to verify that customers have enough available funds to cover the purchase. And uh, you are protecting actually uh, sensitive customer information and allow you also to accept a popular payment method, potentially improving revenue and customer satisfaction so that's kind of cool and so basically uh, to open a business bank account you just have to uh, make sure that you have all the documentation that I gave you a little earlier and please don't forget uh, what I said about the EIN EIN number is very important and also the business documentation you have to provide really depends on your uh, business type right whether you're a sole proprietorship or a partnership or an LLC or a corporation but also there are some cases where uh, you might have to uh, deposit something initially. So there is an initial deposit sort of requirements. It could be uh, $5, it could be $10, and in some cases can go all the way to uh, $1,000. Luckily, Capital One is not asking you anything uh, to, to start, but you gotta really put something anyway to fund, the, to fund the account. So you want to actually speak to the rep to make sure that you have the proper the proper amount before you contact uh, Capital One or before you even, you even initiate your uh, Capital One online or let's say uh, in branch business account opening. So in conclusion to this conversation, I spoke to you about how to open a Capital One business account. I give you the general considerations, the two types of business accounts, the we spoke about the the extras and now the conclusion. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.